Great, then let's get started. Thank you for coming everybody for this uh, Monday, October 2nd, 2023 virtual meeting of the Northampton License Commission. Um, make, I'm calling this meeting to order. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Helen Kahn, and Jennifer Ewers. This meeting is being Zoom recorded. Is there anybody here for public comment? Not seeing any public comment, then we're gonna jump into the agenda, but I am going to um, go a little bit out of order. We're going to take item number four first. That is the application for a short-term liquor license for the trustees of the Forbes Library, 20 West Street on Friday, October 13th, 2023 from four to 6 p.m. This is at the Hosmer Gallery reception for K. Pippin, P. Griffin and V. Sandman. And um, the library will be serving wine and malt and there is a requested fee waiver. Do we have somebody from Forbes with us? Hello. I was like trying to write you a chat saying I can't unmute, but it said Hi. I can't I can't chat either. <laughs> Sorry. How are you, Dave? Uh, yeah, good. 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 We just we just hung a show today. Three photographers. Great. Wonderful. Wine and cheese, the usual. Very good. And for um Everything's going to be the same. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Does anybody have any questions for Faith? I do not. No, no questions. Okay. And do we have a motion then for Faith's application? Indeed. I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license uh, for the trustees of Forbes Library, along with the requested fee wa waiver as detailed on item four of the agenda. I second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. All set then? Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Faith. Moving on then to agenda item number three. This is for the cancellation of the following licenses in accordance with the agreement dated May 15th, 2023 by the licensees and the Northampton License Commission, Pearl Street Nightclub Incorporated, Calvin Theater Corporation, Iron Horse Ventures Incorporated, 2628 Center Street, LLC, 2123 Center Street, LLC, and Eric Shore. And we have with us this afternoon, we have Eric. Can we unmute Eric? Great, hi Eric. Hello. All right, so let's get started talking about all of um, these licenses. So I know there's been a, a lot of activity um, for going in order here that we have on the agenda. Pearl Street Nightclub, there is no activity on Pearl Street. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Well, there's been a lot of activity, but there's nothing to nothing to submit. Nothing, right. Okay. Um, so then that license will be formally canceled this evening. Then we have, um, I want to save the Calvin for last because that's the one piece that hasn't been really discussed in the press. So I want to hear that whole story in a minute, but let's talk first about the Iron Horse. Can you let us know what, um, for the record, what the status is? Um, I think that um, Annie has received submission from the folks from Parlor Room. I'm not certain I can add anything more. I think we found a very good operator in the City has been um, very helpful in terms of uh, allowing uh, certain funding, et cetera, to uh, to help uh, the parlor room uh, make a deal happen. Um, I think Randy, I'm seeing is is on uh, is on the call, but I'm not certain as much I can add. We're we're very happy to see that the Iron Horse is going to continue in very good hands, and we're appreciative of the city for uh, doing what they've done on their part to to help move that along. Um, I know that they've been. Uh, diligent in terms of making submission and uh, you know there have been back and forths happening with them since uh, very early summer and I, I think that they're um, I think that they're well along in finalizing everything at least signed and an arrangement with us has been completed so um, we're just being cooperative to allow for a, a nice smooth transition and then you know we'll be part of whatever help they need in making certain that they're able to get up you know get on with their opening and be successful as Iron Horse going into its 45th year of existence. So we're mm -hmm. appreciative of the commission and the city for all the help that they've provided to make this happen. 
And for that particular license, we're still waiting on the certificate of good standing and the certificate of compliance from the unemployment assistance office to come yep. from you, correct? Exactly. Yes. And where are you in that process? Um, our attorney and uh, our office is moving forward with that. So I think hopefully however long it's going to take to receive that from the Commonwealth and we'll have it forwarded to Annie as soon as it's in our hands. And for 2628 Center Street, can you talk to us about that one? Yep. Um, you know, the goal all along was to try to maintain all the licenses in their existing locations so that those establishments can reopen and bring some people in as we had done previously for many years. And um, after back and forth with a handful of folks, we have moved forward with an entity that is is hoping to reopen uh, the green room and it's um, pretty much in its existing state with certain improvements that they're looking to make and they're expected to um, have an opening, um, at least from my understanding, by um, early winter. Um, and they've been in touch with Annie and I believe they're well along in getting all documents, necessary documents submitted. Okay, and on your end though, we're still waiting on those two items and certificate of good yeah. spending and yep. certificate of compliance? Yes. Okay. And for 2123 Center Street? Uh, that license is going to be transferring and moving to an establishment located on Main Street. And they've submitted, at least my understanding, they've submitted um, necessary documents to, uh, to Anna, you know, through the license mission to Annie and that um, um, they are going to have that license in existence at the restaurant uh, on Main Street as soon as the transfer goes through. Okay. Okay. And then also the certificates of good standing will be pending Same on thing. those. Yes. And then finally to Calvin, can you talk to us about what is in process there? I can. Um, we're happy that after many, many months, um, an extended period of review and back and forth that we have um, come to agreement with an excellent operator for the theater and for you know the full operations and booking uh, and continuing the Calvin um, as, a, um, as a venue in Northampton. Um, they're going to need some time and um, I'm happy to try to answer any questions the commission might have, but we also have some representatives present um, from the partnership that is um, is moving forward with the theater. And um, I think uh, Jim Glancy, who is a principal, um, would be happy. And I think it might be helpful to hear from them directly mm -hmm. because they can, I think, better um, explain what they're looking for in terms of time. I, I would just say to the commission, one, we're appreciative of the help in terms of allowing us to get to this point where we could have found a, an excellent operator for the theater and to maintain its existence and go well, hopefully well beyond what we had done in our heyday in terms of booking and bringing people into town. Uh, they're a very well-respected known operator. And uh, I think they can you know, better speak to what they're looking at doing and, and what they're gonna request from the commission. Okay, so before we speak to them, I just want to make sure I'm understanding correctly for the other licenses, with the exception of Pearl Street, there we that we do have signed documents from the the potential new license holders themselves. Yes. It, agreements for the okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, but we don't have that for not yet. Calvin. Right. Right. Okay. So I would like to um hear from whoever is here to uh speak to that. Sure. Uh I'm Jim Glancy. I'm a, a partner at Barry Presents. Um, Barry Presents was founded in 2004 in New York City. My partner, John Moore, is the founder. He is on the, the, the Zoom, with us, Zoom with us today. Um, uh, we became known in New York for taking bands at um, a 200 capacity room and growing them as far as we could. And some of those little bands we started out with in New York City at the Mercury Lounge were LC sound system and the strokes in my morning jacket and Interpol and black keys and on and on and on. So over time, um, we started opening rooms in, in New York and then we opened a Boston office in 2008 or nine. And uh, Josh Body, who's on the call, runs the Boston office. Her venues in Boston most recently uh, opened Roadrunner 
which is a 3,500 capacity room in Alston. We booked the Royale, which is a 1,200 capacity room. And we booked and run the Sinclair in Cambridge, which is a 525 capacity room. We also started an outdoor venue this year, Suffolk Downs, uh, at 8,500 capacity. And then Josh and his team book shows throughout the city and the region. Um, also on the call for now is Alex Crothers. And I say for now because he advised that he is uh, this afternoon, specifically a single dad uh, dealing with the being a, da a dad first and foremost. So he's on the call. In 2006, he reached out to Barry Presents. He knew my partner, John Moore. And uh, Alex is based out of Vermont and has run a fabulous operation there, the Higher Ground in Burlington, as well as an outdoor series in a number of different places. And he reached out to us. Uh, he knew John Moore socially and said, there's an old vaudeville house in Portland, Maine that hasn't been used for a number of years. You want to take a look at it. And we flew up. I, I happened to know the day. It was August, or I'm sorry, July 30th, 2006, because that was my first day of work at Barry Presents. And we went up and looked at it and uh, fell in love with it and fell in love with the town of Portland. And our first show there was in 2010, My Morning Jacket. And we've been there ever since. We have a long term lease there. We put money into fixing up the building. We revitalized a maybe not a blighted part of uh, Portland, but certainly a neglected part of Portland. And over time, we had a smaller club called Port City Music Hall. We've done shows at the arena. Uh, I think six or seven years ago, we started doing shows outdoors at Thompson's Point, which is a 6,000 capacity uh, outdoor field, everything from Lake Street Dive to Brandy Carlisle. And it's been an incredible partnership with Alex. And uh, that's the team that we envision uh, running the Calvin for decades to come. So it'd be a partnership between Barry Presents and Alex Brothers. Um, Alex, I, I, if you're still on the line and want to say anything, if I've underserved you or if I've left out other bits and pieces of the story, why don't you jump in there? Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you. And as Hello. Jim, hello. Um, I do have to run here in a minute, but thank you. Um, I think Jim said most of it. The only thing I would add is I'm familiar with Western Mass. I've been producing a music festival at Mass Mocha called Solid Sound for, well, we started in 2010 and then we, we started moving to every other summer. So, um, but since 2010, I've been partnering with Mass Mocha and the band Wilco to produce Solid Sound there, which um, is obviously right down the street from Northampton. So um, we're excited at the possibility of coming in and taking over the Calvin and continuing the legacy. And to Jim's point, hopefully for decades to come, bringing amazing live music to the Northampton region. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, I have to say, I you know we didn't know who who the potential buyer was for the Calvin before just now, and you presenting this information and. I've been to every one of these venues in Boston, and I think this is um, an incredibly exciting opportunity for downtown Northampton um, to have this caliber of professionalism and uh, success. Appreciate that. Interested in this venue, that's pretty amazing. So for the venue itself, you envision this the, the same types of bookings, the same, um, is there anything different that you would be doing? Uh, I, I think, our hope would be that I think Eric was running in the 60 plus number of concerts a year. I think we would look to increase that. Um, I think some of that is just more, uh, what's the right word? Oomph. Knowing, given the volume of shows that we do in Boston, in Portland, in New York, in New Jersey, hopefully we have some uh, more ability to get different genres of music in there. We still envision very much uh, uh, singer songwriter all seated scenario and we envision taking the seats out down front and letting people dance and move around so um, I would say there's no genre that Eric was doing before that we wouldn't want to do and we would hopefully be uh, just delivering even more shows okay Helen and Jennifer do you have any questions for these folks um, I want to say this is incredibly exciting news for the Calvin, um, you know, for the city of Northampton and the surrounding area. I mean, obviously, as Natasha said, there's such a level of professionalism in what you've been doing, and and it's exciting that that's going to come to to Northampton. Um, as 
the license commissioners, of course, what we're our piece of it, and I'm sure you knew this was going to come up, is is the alcohol license. Um, and so, and we have this agreement that was uh, written back in May. And um, if we were to look specifically at the agreement, it says that all the paperwork needs to be in by last Friday. And and obviously that's not the case in this um, instance. Um, at the same time, I can't speak for everyone, but I think we don't want to be in the way of this type of transfer happening. Um, but I guess my question is, um, how important is the alcohol license to to this transfer? Critical. Sorry? Critical. Critical. Okay. Okay. Um, I have thoughts on it, but I'll, for now, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that because um, I wanted to know if Jennifer had any comments or questions. Well, I think my, well, I want to echo everyone's sentiment that I too have been to several of the music venues that were mentioned and, uh, and they're solid um, venues and just the thought of that experience, you know, carrying over here into Northampton is great. And I'm, I'm really excited for that. But in terms of the agreement that had been signed in May, I think my, my question is involving the timeline. I mean, how much time is needed before we have a PNS signed or even if Eric wants to answer, you know, how long do you think you would need to be in compliance of, of the agreement that we reached in May for the Calvin? Um, I can answer what I can. I think that these discussions um, prior to coming to a, an agreement with um, the Bowery Presents and the Crothers Partnership has been going on for many, many months. Um, it's quite involved. Um, and besides the fact that we were at the same time in negotiation with a number of different parties, both several for this license, but also for all of the others. And time, unfortunately, wasn't our wasn't our partner in in how this all transpired, especially given the summer months, which many folks are on a different type of schedule, even given the time constraints. So um, I'm just asking the commission to you know to look upon this favorably, understanding that I think we found um, the single best partnership to absolutely the best partnership to come in and be able to run this facility on behalf of of the Calvin and the community as a whole. Um, and I don't think it's going to be all that much time that they're requesting. I'll let uh, Jim uh, speak to that better than I, but it's a it's a their their entity is a that's that's coming into the city as a partnership um, involving some of the best um, promoting entities in definitely in the country. And he can better speak to what might be necessary given their both their partnership structure and their corporate structure, but my guess is that they've got a pretty good understanding. I know that what we're working on with them to finalize all of our paperwork is very, very fluid and is now with attorneys. And my my hope is that all of our work is going to be done, you know, between now and the end of this month and simultaneous to that, they'll be moving forward with what needs to be done to satisfy the, the commission and to get whatever information has to come into Annie to be able to present to you folks for um, for review. But Jim can better answer their time frame because they, they they have a much better idea than I do. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think the, the goal of having a, all the paperwork done by November 1st is our goal. Uh, what we don't want to do is get off to a bad start with the city by saying November 1 and then October 25th, we call and say, we're going to miss it by a week or we're going to miss it by two weeks or something like that. Um, if there was an opportunity to, to uh, have December 1st is a drop dead date for us. I'm very comfortable. We will be doing that before then. Um, just been doing it too long and know that too many things can, when lawyers get involved and I don't know if there are lawyers on the zoom, no offense, uh, hopefully um, I think simultaneously for us, you know, is when will we see action? In, in the Calvin. And uh, right now, booking wise, we're booking anywhere from three months to 15 months out. So if we can be all our paperwork done and dusted by November 1st, November 10th, somewhere around there, I think we're looking at shows on sale not long after that, with shows starting to happen as early as late winter, call that mid-February to mid-March is what our target would be. Um, I think that 
you know, we are going to be spending money there. I think uh, some of the improvements are the expensive, not public facing things like a roof and an HVAC system. Um, an HVAC system, frankly, we may order it 10 minutes after we execute the lease and we may not get that new HVAC unit until next August. That's beyond our control, but shows can happen now, as you know, I mean, it's, um, we can do shows in there tomorrow. So there are some cosmetic things that we're gonna look to do, some things in the dressing room, some things in the venues, some things in the bar, but but that would be a rough timeline. We're shooting for November 1st on paperwork, uh, drop dead of December 1, somewhere in that time period, we've got a GM on board, we've got a buyer on board, and they're starting to book shows and we're starting to market shows by the end of the year. That would be our timeline. Sooner would be fantastic. I'm just being realistic. Mm -hmm. no, thank you. That's that, very that helpful. I would, if I can just um, add as well, uh, the commission may be aware, but the theater is up to date on all of its um, on all of its inspections um, and has been. Uh, the theater's in great shape. Um, the partnership is known to be very customer oriented and, and musician oriented. And so the changes that they would look to make uh, both cosmetically and other are all really for the benefit of the consumer and the entertainers coming through the room. They've got a fabulous, if not one of the best, if not the best reputations in the business for keeping customers and entertainers happy. They've been through, um, they have been through the room numerous times and they've sent somebody who has constructed some of the best known um, venues uh, throughout New England, including the new Roadrunner that was built on the New Balance campus uh, outside of Boston. Um, and um, so I'm confident that, you know, what Jim is telling you, and we wouldn't have gotten to this point if we didn't feel very comfortable with the partnership that we've been in discussion with for a number of months. Um, and, and as well, you know, it's 25 years this week that, that I reopened the theater after it was dormant for many years. Thankfully, the theater's only been dark for a handful of months with our last show being um, the end of last January. And I think uh, with the commission's blessing that it's the theater um, as an entity in terms of continuing um, would be in the best hands possible. And the city will be you know, very well served by the group that's coming in uh, with an amount of shows that is probably gonna be double to what we did. And on any given show night when, when we, had a full house, the entire downtown was well served with restaurants and other establishments having lots of business transacted. And I think the partnership is gonna do uh, what we did and beyond. So, um, you know, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in front of the commission and these folks wouldn't be here if we didn't feel that we were close to, to moving forward and making all of this happen. Jim and others, can you speak to, um the liquor licenses that you have in the other communities where you operate venues, have you had any compliance issues? Um, the, uh, we're part, Bowery is partnered with AEG. Um, in 2016, we, uh, we did a deal with AEG. So at that point, up to that point, Bowery had always been self-operating. Um, I think I was on 12 or 14 liquor licenses. At this point, I'm on the liquor license in Portland with Alex. I'm on a liquor license in Philadelphia. Um, the other liquor licenses are all third-party concessionaire. Um, the one Bowery has used is a company called Spectrum, who does uh, shows and events all over the country, all over North America. Um, we are we do roughly 2,500 shows a year, and we have had almost no. Uh, issues and whether we were self-operated or third-party concessionaire. Um, there was an issue at the Sinclair last fall that resulted in a one-day suspension um, this June. Um, we didn't have a show, we weren't open for business. Um, I think if you were to uh, Google Bowery, Bowery Presents, look at all our individual venues, I think that would be the one black mark um, out of all of them. And uh, I would just leave it that it's at certain points, sometimes it's better to take take some punishment, whether you feel you're deserved or not, as opposed to keep fighting things. 
Um, in Maine, where we're partners with Crothers and we're both on the license, um, there have not been any issues. Um, we would welcome in any jurisdiction um, uh, reaching out to local authorities. We can give you landlord names. We can give you city council members. Um, you, you can pick the venues. We won't uh, guide you to our favorite landlord or favorite venue or anything like that, but we have a virtually spotless um, record, I'd say in the last 15 years, that's probably 28, 29,000 shows and one incident came to mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, Helen and Jennifer, do you have anything else that you, any other information you'd like to um, get from these folks before we talk a bit more about this? I don't have any other questions, thank you. I don't either, I think I have the information I need, thank you. Okay, so in um, discussing all the licenses with the exception of Pearl Street, because that, that license is being canceled tonight, um, the remaining four licenses have outstanding paperwork. So that is, you know, this having all this paperwork together was in our agreement dated in May. Um, so technically we could cancel everything and say, okay, see, let's call this a day. We're taking all five licenses back, but I'm very, I really want to, um, shine some light on the fact that we have, you know, not just the folks who are here to talk to us about their plans for the Calvin, their hopes for the Calvin, but we have people investing in downtown Northampton at a time when, um, you know, we, we need and want people investing in this great downtown that we have and coming out of the pandemic and um, everything leading up to it. It's just a wonderful opportunity. And I want to, I want to thank all of the people who've, who've come forward for these licenses. Um, I think it's huge. And I want to be able to have a discussion as a commission that doesn't get in the way of these things happening, but rather understands that um, investment is going to be more critical to Northampton than taking these licenses and just having a lottery and, and giving them away, um, which is also great. However, I really want to tip my hat to these folks who are coming forward to invest in our downtown. To that end, we should talk about if Helen and Jennifer, if you're in agreement with moving forward with the um, both the basement, the green room, all of the four, um, would you be open to an extension for the compliance certifications that Eric needs to provide? Yeah, my thoughts, I'm in full agreement of everything you just said. And um, uh, my thoughts on that are that the reality of the situation is if if Eric doesn't get that paperwork in and then they come to, um, those licenses won't be approved at our October 18th meeting. Um, when they apply to get them approved. So that's the reality of the situation. So I, uh, in some ways, I think it may just take care of itself. In my opinion, I don't think we need to make an extension. I think it just means not canceling those licenses um, and hoping that all that paperwork gets in there. I'm sure that the buyers are are very, um, you know, they're, they're reliant on that paperwork getting in. Um, the Calvin, of course, is a different situation. Yeah. Um, and, um, we, I think, are in agreement that we want to do everything that we can to help that transfer happen. Yep. Um, at the same time, um, you know, obviously the letter of the agreement has not been met, but um, I, I would propose that there is what we could do since we're hearing November 1st, December 1st to say um, that if uh that paperwork is not in by our December meeting, then we have the option to cancel that license as well. The Calvin. Yeah. Calvin. Um, Other so option is just not to cancel it and see what happens. But I it, it's been effective to have a deadline, let me put it that way, in the past. So yes. um I would lean towards putting another deadline on it. And I I think I misspoke in categorizing all of them together because technically we have paperwork for the Iron Horse basement and the green room licenses. So it's just pending these two certificates of compliance. So we wouldn't need an extension on that, but we would need those certificates of compliance by the October 18th meeting in order to um, transfer. 
Right. Although, so, I mean, technically, okay. if you read the agreement, we could at this point say we don't. Yes, have to, we could cancel. I yep. don't think we're leaning that direction. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Jennifer. I appreciate Jim's candor and the um, what he sees as a realistic time frame. I mean, I thought, you know, do do we grant a two week extension, right? I mean, how many business days do we count them out would be needed? Um, I I appreciate the information that that December first is is more realistic. Um, I'm a half step behind in Helen's thinking um, in terms of. Um, Preparing to to discuss the licenses at future meetings rather than a firm deadline. Um, I would propose with the Calvin granting an extension maybe through the end of the year or at least 12-1. Um, I think I'm more comfortable with a deadline for that. And as Natasha mentioned, we do have paperwork for the, the other three in particular. So I think I'm just, uh, I would like to discuss more a potential um, date to reclaim the license for the Calvin. Right. Just to clarify, Jennifer, I, I think we're on the same page with that. I think what I was saying was, is that date the our December meeting? Not that it would be a discussion, but to say if the paperwork isn't there by that date, although it could we could move it sooner to 12-1, um, you know, then we will be canceling um that license oh i follow so, so yeah. essentially yeah, making you. an extension and just a, just a different date yes um, understood thank you yeah okay and then there is um the other item eric of the the four licenses will need to be renewed prior to them being transferred so that's yes. an expense that you or yeah, somebody else We'll be, we'll be in communication with Annie as to what's necessary. The, the buyers have all already had the conversation as Annie's been forthcoming with that information. And as we've done for almost three decades, we'll renew the licenses as we have, uh, understanding that those licenses are in the process of being transferred. But whatever we need to do uh, related to a successful, um, what would be the 2024 ABCC approvals, um, we'll stay in communication with Annie in her office to make certain that those I's are dotted and T's crossed to be able to have successful transfers, uh, or successful renewals so that all the purchasers can then have their transfers be, um, you know, accordingly done with, uh, with the licenses in effect. Okay. Um, since we have attorney Seawald here, I'd just like to ask you, is there anything that we should be considering that we haven't yet? No, I think you've got, uh, you've got it down. Uh, Hearing that the uh, the documentation is with the lawyers, I think nothing helps a lawyer more than a tight deadline. So I would set <laughs> fixed deadline for every uh, uh, for everything that needs to be filed. But I think you're you're doing a great job, Commission. Right on, right on target. All right, thank you. All right, then Annie. So do we need to vote on each individual license now? How do you want this done? You should have a vote on each license, if I may, including okay. the Pearl Street, for sure. Okay, yes. All right. Sorry, just for clarification, are we... Um, okay, yeah, I guess we can do that. I didn't know if we're just voting to cancel the ones we're canceling and and sort of saying nothing about the others. <laughs> no, I think we need to or say lots of stuff about the others, too. <laughs> okay. yeah, I, I'd like okay. to see deadlines for paperwork in on right, the other right, ones right. as well. Yeah. Okay. All right, and Eric, for the compliance paperwork for Iron Horse Basement and the Green Room, that was feasible by the October 15th, 18th meeting? I don't know that. I know we had a conversation with our attorney related to the length of time, and I think as he's had more recent experience with some of the transfers going through ABCC in terms of whatever time it takes on the Commonwealth to get certain information, I don't know that. I would ask that, you know, obviously we're, we're moving forward with whatever has to be submitted. And I, as much as I appreciate Attorney Seawald looking for a firm deadline, I would just ask that so that we're not similar to what Jim had requested, having to come back to you, just understanding that all of the paperwork from the buyers is in and that we're moving forward. And if there is some kind of hiccup regarding um, the Commonwealth and paperwork necessary, that 
there's an understanding that this, you know we are moving forward with all of these. We obviously want to see all of the all of these licenses properly and you know efficiently transfer. And your attorney's not on the call right now, correct? Um, I, He's not. Unfortunately, he had a prior commitment. We found out about the meeting on Friday uh, early afternoon. Okay, so. Um, and he can communicate as he communicates well with um, Attorney Seawald's office, and I can communicate also in keeping um, Annie and her office up to date on all of the above. But um, it's all all understood, and I know that some of the buyers contacted our office today, just even regarding the the proper paperwork for the. Um, 2024 uh, submission that has to be made and common VIX licenses, et cetera, that there's a lot of other paperwork that obviously is going to be necessary to submit. So um, as we're going to submit all of what we've done every year for um, for the 2024 licenses, and at the same time, all of the compliance paperwork is going to be requested. And as soon as that is received, we will forward it. And are you up? Are you current on all taxes and everything? So there's as far as any, we know, yeah, uh, we've never. So there should, really shouldn't be any reason for the city yeah. to or for the state to. I would, no, I would hope not. We've never okay. missed never missed a meals tax ever in our existence, and uh, you know, meals and sales tax, uh, beverage tax, never missed any of that. Okay, um, Helen and Jennifer. Then my inclination for uh those three licenses iron horse basement in the green room is to stick with october 18th i don't see any reason why um if there aren't any taxes in arrears if paperwork's already been filed why the abcc couldn't provide the certificates of compliance within this time frame for those three licenses um and just to clarify i mean that's a couple weeks away probably yep. everyone's looking at their their calendar yeah, uh, and, and the process has been ongoing, so we're not starting from scratch today is my my thought. Alan. Um, are, are these documents being issued by the ABCC or the or the DOR or? Yeah, I think or, they're DOR. Yeah, the ABCC doesn't, okay. I think it's DOR documents. One's yeah, it's, from I think the it's... DOR and one's from the DUA. And typically right. after they're requested, they take two, three, four days to be transmitted as long as all taxes are paid. So, which makes me curious, when when was that submitted, Eric? We haven't, we haven't submitted on all yet, is my understanding. Yeah. Why haven't you submitted on all yet? Because um, most of what we're discussing today has all come together just over the last couple of weeks. And as these conversations were all still fluid, it's just something that was over, it was just an oversight. So you'll be submitting tomorrow? Yep. Yes. And then I think by the 18th, we'll be all set. Fingers crossed. Eric, is Mark doing that for you or are you doing that on your own? Um, no, that'll be done either through Mark or the accounting office. Could, could you ask them to copy me? I will, yes. Appreciate it. I mean, I just want to say that it is concerning that we've had months for this and everything has been done at the 11th hour um causing the buyers to have to scramble to get in the paperwork and they've done their part um so um so i think deadlines are important uh so natasha then uh what is your suggestion because is your suggestion are you talking about having an in by the 18th obviously that doesn't give them time to then apply for approval to us, but it just is just a date. Um and, and we'll be meeting then. So are you saying if it's if things are not in by the 18th, then we have the option to cancel or we're canceling? We should cancel. Yeah. I mean there doesn't seem like there's any reason why for these two these two pieces aren't from the um these two pieces need to they should should have already been requested. They haven't been they will be tomorrow and Attorney Seawald will be CC'd on that, and there doesn't seem to be any reason why between now and October 18th, based on what Annie's um, experience has been. I mean, that's two, almost, yeah, two and a half weeks. Well, two weeks without weekends, but. What are your thoughts, Jennifer? Um, 
I don't want to put unfair pressure on the others trying to meet this October 18th um, deadline. It, I want to be fair to the buyers as well. Well, I think uh, this is for this deadline is on Eric. Just for Mr. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The other, um, you know, we had the, the deadline of September 29th was for applications to be in process. So right, right. And this is just for the compliance certificate. Yes. Yes. yes I understand. Yeah. Okay. Of 1018. Yep. I was just going to see if Alan would feel that an October 31st deadline is more prudent, but so, if so Annie here, thinks that the uh, two I'm forms sorry, can be I'm, obtained. No. Uh, um, you know, I, what I would suggest is that you're going to meet on October 18th. Um, I would notice, and and if the certificates are in, is that the hearing date that you're going to hear these transfers? You're going to hold your public hearing on that date. I think that was the plan. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So if 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 the certificates are in, then you'll go forward with your public hearing. If the certificates aren't in, you'll either continue it to the next hearing or to a special hearing, or you'll cancel it. But that'll be your option on the 18th. And that'll be a decision I would suggest you make based on all the information that you can gather on the 18th. You know, when was this submitted? What, you know, why yep. don't you have these, you know, that kind of things. Um, but I think that it seems completely uh, reasonable to move this to the 18th and reevaluate at that time. Thank you. That's very helpful. Okay. So are we, um, you want to move on and discuss the Calvin piece? Uh, sure. Okay. And then make all the motions. Sure. Or we can do these three motions now and the Pearl Street motion. Um, I think we can make the, why don't we do that. I was, I was okay. just getting these four out of the way and then we can have yep. that discussion on the Calvin. Okay. Um, and so, um, so I, I guess, um, and maybe Alan can chime in that is the motion essentially we're, um, providing an extension, um, on the cancellation of these licenses until the October 18th meeting, or I'm sorry, you're muted. You can phrase it that way. It depends on how you interpret this agreement. I mean, the, the transfer applications are in, um, yeah. does say all paperwork associated or something like that, you know? And so technically I suppose this is non-complying then you can just continue it to the 18th um, for the filing of the certificates at which time a hearing will be held on the transfer. Okay. Um. So uh, something along the lines of see, um, seeing that uh, an application for the transfer of licenses has been started and uh, there are two pieces of paperwork outstanding. We will I make a motion to um, continue, uh, make a continuance on the cancellation of the license at, um, Iron Horse Ventures Inc. Is that does that work for everyone? I think so. Yep. And or can we do all three at once? I mean, it's essentially the same for all three. Does it matter if you, they're all? You can do all three at once. Okay. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. So as I was at Iron Horse Ventures Inc., uh, twenty six to twenty eight Center Street LLC, and twenty one to twenty three Center Street LLC. Oh, my, did I say continuous to the October 18th meeting? And at that point, um, if paperwork is in a hearing for the transfer of the licenses will be conducted. Yeah, and that's your motion, Helen? Yes. Yes. Did I you second. get that, Annie? Okay. <laughs> um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, Pearl Street. Uh, I move to cancel the license for uh, Pearl Street Nightclub, Inc. Second. And Natasha? 
Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Okay, so that leaves the Calvin. Uh, let's cap that discussion. Um, this, you know, like I said, this this was, um, didn't know who was gonna be coming this evening, who uh, was coming forward with a plan to purchase the Calvin. This far exceeds any expectations I could have had for operators. Um, I think it's an incredible opportunity for downtown. Um, I also understand the the magnitude of the operation has probably not lent itself to speedy attorney handlings and things. Um, and that it would be, I think, in the best interest of, um, of the city and the economic vitality of our nighttime life here in Northampton to work with these folks on um, something around December 1st, on or before December 1st. <laughs> Yeah, I completely agree with that. So then that would be um, essentially a motion to um, for an extension of the cancellation of the uh, the Calvin Theater Corp license until Hold on, what, for the December what, 1st deadline. I'm not actually yeah. making it, I'm just talking. Yeah, the, well, I have a question <laughs> for Jim. Jim, um, could you just chime in real quick again? So the timing to wrap this up, when... December 1st is your timing-ish potentially for the purchase or the purchase and sale agreement. Do you see a purchase and sale agreement happening sooner? For all the paperwork in for to get the transfer done. Okay. We should definitely peg this to a transfer application. That's that should okay. be yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Sure. Okay. Sorry, Han. So how would our so and we're saying December first, right? I, I mean I I think based on what Jim has said, it's reasonable. I mean, we'd like sooner, obviously, but yeah, and I'm sure you'd like sooner, Jim, because you want to yeah. start yeah. planning yeah. the shows. We want to get going. For, sure. <laughs> for the record, they're nodding heads in the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how about, um, let me take a shot at um, making a motion to um, uh, extend the agreement. Um, hang on. Hang on. Or just to make a motion to ex ex extend the cancellation of the license for the Calvin Theater Corp. Um, uh, to December 1st to have the transfer application in hand by that time. That was very clunky. If anyone has a suggestion for how I can <laughs> say that a little bit better, Alan, if you have a suggestion. Can you read it again, Helen? I don't know what I just said. Um, so uh, yeah, I make a motion to extend the cancellation of the license for Calvin Theater Corp. Um, to December 1st. This is the trans extend the transfer application for- Okay, extend, yeah. Okay, extend the need for a transfer application for Calvin Theater Corp um, in order to not cancel the license. Uh, there needs to be some mention of that to December 1st. Uh, so Helen, originally yeah. you said- um, <laughs> That you move to can to extend the cancellation of the license for Calvin Theater Corp to December first to have a transfer application in hand by that time. So, if 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 I might jump in, yeah. might it be okay. easier just to um, to agree to modify the date in paragraph six of the agreement from September 29th, twenty twenty three to December first, twenty twenty three, because that has all the other information about what needs to happen in order to avoid the cancellation. Okay. Now the question. Sorry. But the, this also um, um, would envision the possibility of of uh, the, the LLC reopening without a transfer. So are we just talking about a transfer? 
or are we also talking about the possibility if the transfer doesn't isn't going to go forward that that Eric or his entity might and reopen the venue? Well, didn't the agreement say that this was a one shot for transfers, and if they if the transferee didn't wasn't successful, that the license right. would come back? Yeah, but if the deadline um, okay. is extended, oh, I see. So if the deadline's extended, then it could either be a a transfer application or reopening. So what I think I'm hearing is that we'll extend the date in paragraph six from September 29th, 2023 to December 1st, 2023 for the purposes of filing a transfer application only. Yes. For the Calvin, specifically for the Calvin. Right, this is all specifically for the Calvin Theater. Yep. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion to extend the date um, listed in the agreement in paragraph six from September 29th, 2023 to December 1st, 2023 um, for a transfer application only and for the Calvin Theater Corp only. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. We're looking forward to um, hopefully wrapping this up with you and working with you in the future. And thank you for your investment in our downtown. It'd be great. Thank you. The people will come. <laughs> we believe. We believe. Yes. Yes, They'll be they there. Will. Yep, we're hungry. Okay. <laughs> for a long okay. time. Yeah. I know. All right. Moving onward then, item number six, new business. Any new business? Annie, nothing? I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> Done for me. <laughs> All right, Jennifer, are you good? I'm good. All right, so make a motion to adjourn. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Thanks, everybody.